Okay, so um, an important thing that we mentioned here is all exponential functions have asymptotes, right? Um, for now, the default is going to be that they all have a horizontal asymptote, and the default is going to be that it's at y equals 0. For now, you don't even have to think about it. Horizontal asymptote, y equals 0, all right? Now, the domain for exponential functions is all real numbers. Again, no need to think about this. Is it an exponential function? Domain is all real numbers. The range is connected to the asymptote. It's either going to be y is greater than the asymptote or y is less than the asymptote. Always. Okay? Okay. Now, let's take a look at an example, right? Exponential growth. So suppose you wake up in the morning and you know what? Like you're feeling just fine. Nothing's wrong with you, right? You get to school by about 10. You have like a little tickle in your throat, right? And then like by lunch, like you're really like feeling kind of weak. I don't know what's wrong with you. And then by the time you go home, you are just like bedridden. Like that's it. You're done. You can't move. You just feel horrible. So what happened? Somehow, you got a little bacteria in your system. And, you know, very little. Not even enough to make you feel it. But over a very short amount of time, the bacteria multiplied and multiplied and multiplied. And now you have so much that it's just taken over your body. That's an example of exponential growth. A huge amount of change in a very short amount of time right? So then you're like, okay, this sucks, right? The next day your parents are like, no, no, you're not going to school. We got to take you to the doctor. They take you to the doctor. They take one look at you. They do the test and stuff. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, you definitely need some antibiotics. You take one, you take two, and all of a sudden you're back to your old self. So what happened there? The same thing, an exponential change, but whereas before we had exponential growth, right? When the bacteria was multiplying, now with the antibiotics, We've got exponential decay. A short amount of time, in a short amount of time, something, you know, decreased to almost zero. So we said all exponential functions have asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. So when you took the antibiotics, did every single last cell of bacteria in your body die? No. no. But you know, it came pretty close to you having about zero bacteria, but it's never really going to be zero, right? That's what this asymptote business means, okay? So again, um, this is an example exponential decay. Again, the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. The domain is again all real numbers, and the range is again connected to the horizontal asymptote. So now, if you just have a graph, how do you know if it represents exponential growth or exponential decay? Well, remember we always read graphs from left to right. As you move further and further right and you are tracing the graph, look at this exponential growth graph. Is it going towards or away from the x-axis? Away. Away from. That's exponential growth, right? So as you move right, Graph moves away from x-axis. But look at the exponential decay. As you move to the right, the graph moves towards the x-axis. Okay? As you move right, graph goes towards x-axis. That's how you know if it's growth or decay from a graph. But now, over on the next page, what if you have the function and you don't have the graph? Well, you can also tell from the function. If the function is exponential growth, then this number b has to be greater than 1. So now you're like, Miss Malikin, what even is b? The b is the number that the exponent belongs to. So for example, take a look at this one. Who does that exponent of x belong to? The 3. Yeah. 3 is bigger than 1. This is growth. If you have exponential decay, b is between 0 and 1. So who does this x belong to? 
Okay. The half, oh. right? Half is between 0 and 1, so this is dk. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these functions. Look, look at a. Raise your hand if you think this is growth. Raise your hand if you think this is dk. Okay, this is definitely growth. The x belongs to the 2. The 2 is greater than 1. Growth. 0.5 to the x. Raise your hand if you think growth. Raise your hand for dk. This is definitely dk. x belongs to the 0.5. That's between 0 and 1. Okay. If, it's, if this number is over 1, it's growth. If it's between 0 and 1, it's decay. So now, C, raise your hand if you think growth. Raise your hand if you think decay. This is definitely decay. If it's less than 1, it's between 0 and 1. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Is between, the o. between 0 and 1. Because less than, it could also be negative 3, right? We've got to be, like, this is math. We've got to be accurate. Okay. Next one, raise your hand for growth. No. Raise your hand for decay. Decay, because the x, who does the x belong to? The one-fourth. Who cares about the two in front? So definitely decay. Okay, so now we're going to graph our very first exponential function. Right. Um, first, identify if it's growth or decay. What is this one? Growth. Growth. Okay, the asymptote, regardless, is always going to be y equals 0. This is a, you know, very little thinking problem. Y-intercept is f of 0. So basically, you substitute x uh, as 0. You make x 0. So 2 to the 0 equals 1. The y-intercept is 1. Okay, let's leave that there for a minute. f of 0. Okay. The domain is all real numbers? The domain is always all real numbers. Okay, before we go to the domain, we established that this is growth, right? In order to graph these, you're going to make a table. You're going to take x values, plug them in, get the y values. Of course, you're free to pick whatever value for x that you want. But seeing as these increase so rapidly, like very quickly, you get into like the 54s and the 100s and the whatever. So for the most part, 90% of the time, when we're dealing with growth, I like to pick these numbers, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, okay? So um, pick these. But how do you know it was, it was, it was a, a 2 to the 0 part? For growth. Because we always said it. Because y-intercept is when x is 0. So you, set, you make x 0 for y-intercept. This you learned in like algebra or something. Okay, so now... Take a look. What's the domain? We said all real numbers. Okay. Let's graph. Let's plot the points here. So 2 to the minus 1, whenever you have a negative exponent, it makes the base into its reciprocal. So this will be 1 over 2 to the 1, 1 half. 2 to the 0, we get 1. Anything to the 0 is 1, remember? Okay, 2 to the 1, I get 2. 2 to the 2, I get 4. Now it's time to graph. Always put your asymptote first. So why is the first one 1 half? It's 2 to the negative first. When you have a negative exponent, it flips it, so it moves down to the as, uh, um, denominator. Okay, so negative 1, I have a half. 1, 2, 4. Okay, now, you've got these cute little points here. Okay, take a look. This, this is not an exponential graph. This is kindergarten connect the dots. This is not what we want. Is the, sorry, is the first one negative 1 half or 1 half? 1 half. It just makes it a reciprocal. If you have 2 to the negative 1, it moves it into the denominator, and it'll be 2 to the positive 1. Okay, so... Huh? Is it, it is positive 1 half. When x is negative 1, y is positive 1 half. Okay, so look, this is not a correct graph, right? Remember what I said about exponential graphs. They increase very rapidly, so show me the increase. And they have an asymptote, so show me that it follows the asymptote. Now you get full credit. Okay, range. 
we said the range is always going to be connected to the asymptote. So, if the graph sits above the asymptote, the range is y is greater than 0. That's it. Okay? Greater because it's a, it's a, pot, it's a it's an exponential growth? No. no. It's greater because it physically sits above the asymptote. Oh. Okay. Let's do another one. Wait, should we go back to that graph for a while? Okay. <clears throat> so the next one, growth or decay? Decay. Decay. Because the B is between 0 and 1. Right. So now, asymptote is again y equals 0 because I haven't told you otherwise. Okay? The y-intercept, that's f of 0. So you always replace whatever x you have with a 0. 1 over 3 to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. Okay. So we established that this is decay. For decay, I like to use these numbers. They're basically the same, but I just move to the left one, right? So I just go from negative 2 to 1. Okay, you're not bound by law to do that, but they just produce better numbers, okay? Okay, so let's do this. Look, 1 over 3 to the power of negative 2. Okay, now stop, look up here. Again, we have a negative exponent. When you have a negative exponent, it flips the number. It makes it into a reciprocal. So 1 over 3 becomes 3 over 1 to the power of positive 2. So that becomes 9. And then here, right, to the negative 1, 0, 1. So here, this will be 3 to the 1. 3. This we already did was 1. And what's the last one? Uh, one, third. one third. What's the domain? All, All real numbers. numbers. Okay, so let's graph. Asymptote goes first. We said this was decay, right? Yes. Okay. So when x is negative 2, y is 9. All the way up there. When x is negative 1, y is 3. 0, 1. 1, 1 third. Let's graph this one. Okay. Okay. So wait, hang on. So now look. On the first page we wrote, if it's decay, oh, I have a lag here. On the first page, we wrote, if it's decay, it moves towards the x-axis, right? Is that what this is doing? Yes. It is absolutely doing that. So, yes, we did this correctly. Okay, so the range, again, y is connected to the asymptote. This graph. So, raise your hand if it's y is greater than 0. Raise your hand if it's y is less than 0. Okay, let, okay so let me ask you another question. Does the graph sit above or below the asymptote above. above means greater than because where what y value does this exist for all of the y value is greater than zero right this is y equals zero this is greater than okay so if we were to get like a negative uh, uh -huh. negative y then it would be right correct okay so let's take a look at this next one asymptote is what uh y equals zero y equals zero all the time so y-intercept. Okay, so take a look here, everyone. f of 0 is negative 0 0.5 to the 0. Okay, that 0 only belongs to the 0 0.5. The negative is separate before it. So this is negative 1. Okay, cool. All right, so here I'm going to have, again, this is dk, right? So I picked from negative 2 to 1. So look, now I'm going to have to do 0.5 to the power of negative 2. But come on, who wants to deal with these decimals? Honestly, fractions are better in this case. So what I do is I say, okay, this is negative. 0.5 is a half 
to the negative 2, right? I know 0.5 is a half, so I write it that way. It actually makes it easier for me when I'm dealing with exponents. So now, negative stays outside. Because, okay, this outside negative stays outside. But because the exponent is negative, that flips the 1 half, makes it a 2 to the power of 2. So I get negative 4. So it's also negative 4, right? Okay. Right. Once you flip the fraction, you make it a positive exponent. But the exponent on the outside is parentheses. Right. It's not technically attached to the number, is it? It is. It belongs to the number, but not the negative. Okay, so now I'm going to give you like 10 seconds to fill in the other numbers. Negative 1, 0, 1, go. We're going to get negative 2, negative 1, and a negative a half. Okay, asymptote. So why is it negative a half to the log of one? So it'll be negative 0 0.5 or negative 1 half to the 1. Okay, so when x is negative 2, we're at negative 4. Then negative 2, then negative 1, then negative a half. This is what it was. This um, growth or decay? Decay. So as I move right, is the graph approaching the x-axis? Is it going towards the x-axis? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. See? Okay, domain is all real numbers. Okay, so the range. Raise your hand if you think greater than zero. Raise your hand if you think less than zero. Definitely less than zero. This is the first ever less than zero we got. So if you compare this equation to the other equations that we graph, to the other two, what's different? That they're above the asymptote. Right, but what's the, just look at the equation. Oh, the negative. The negative in front, you see this negative in front? That negative is what made this graph fall below the x-axis, okay? And now I got y is less than zero for the range. The negative is it's a reflection, right? So this negative. That's like the sign, the, the sign. Exactly. Negative makes a reflection exactly around x-axis, just like the cosine and the sine graphs and the tangent and the cotangent and everything else, right? Okay, so that's pretty much the lesson for today.